January 15, 1957, rules and duties for being 24. One, have better posture. Two, write mother three times a week. Three, eat less. Four, write two hours a day minimally. Five, never complain publicly about Brandeis or money. Six, teach David to read. The first volume of journals were published in 2008. I read them. I was really taken by her stories of her, her young life, you know, her, her mind. We have taken her journals, her writing, very raw, unfiltered writing, not polished prose at all. The record of her life that she left us, what she chose to note and to write down. And we have tried to take those things and make them into something else, make them into a piece of theater, uh, a work of art. When I shut my eyes, I see Jesus on the cross. It's time for Homer, I think. The best way to divert these morbid, individualized religious fancies is to overwhelm them with the impersonal Homeric bloodbath. Paganize his tender spirit. The Builders Association has a long, you know, almost 20 year history of working with media. And um, it's a very important part of all of our shows. Our signature is this kind of incorporation of sound and video in a way that is kind of seamless and meant to really be part of the landscape of the stage. Sontag used to just surround herself in all of these lists and all these writings and the journals were just so, there was so much material in them that was, some of it was very linear and some of it was not at all. Using that as our inspiration, we just kind of riffed on the idea of having this constant swarm of information around her. The only thing to be regretted about the close-ups of limp penises and bouncing breasts the shots of masturbation and oral sexuality in Jack Smith's Flaming Creatures is they make it hard to simply talk about this remarkable film. One has to defend it. The old Sontag really is placing us, and we are, we are watching the young Susan through the lens of the old Sontag. And I think that's the key setup of the piece, is that she is the one presenting this show, and she is the one sort of giving us this flashback into her youth. My desire to write is connected to my own sexuality. I need to identify as a weapon to match the weapon society has against me. The story really is this kind of internal struggle that we all go through to become who we want to be. And, you know, you see her from the age of 14, you know, wracked with anxiety and nervousness and having these triumphs and doubling back and you know, I think rising and falling and all the things that all of us do in her willful way to become a writer. January 1964, Mademoiselle Maxi awarded the publication's Merit Award along with cosmonaut Valentina Tereshkova, opera singer Riri Grist, and Broadway sensation Barbara Streisand. The train was due to arrive in five minutes and there were no porters anywhere in sight. The driver offered to carry my bags down when I got, became slightly frantic, this is against the rules, carried them into the station where there were still no porters and then down to the train, which was just pulling in. For all of this and the cab fare, $2.15, I gave him $4. He tipped the 